Welcome to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. I am so happy to be with all of my geeks again and anybody listening on the radio who might be new here, anybody even listening to the podcast that might be new here. Welcome into Geek Therapy Radio, where we are all geeks about something. No matter what you're into, no matter what your hobbies are, we're all geeks about something. You can be a geek about muscle cars. You can be a geek about bodybuilding, even. You can be a geek about cameras, astronomy, photography, videography, computers, computer gaming, audio, uh, oils, pastels, paints, pencil art, like any sort of any sort of hobby, any sort of geekdom. We're all geeks about something. That is the whole motto of Geek Therapy Radio. No matter what background you come from, politically, religiously, ethnically any of that, we are all geeks about something, and that's something we always have uh, in common. Maybe we don't have the same geek things in common, geek hobbies in common, but we all have something in common that we care about something deeply outside of our normal kind of work life. We all have something that brings us joy and brings us peace, and those are our geek things, and that's what we celebrate here on Geek Therapy Radio. Uh, You can find Geek Therapy Radio just to get all the plugs out of the way. Geek Therapy Radio podcast on all your favorite podcast players, of course, the iHeartRadio app, uh, Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Basically, any way you listen to podcasts, just type in Geek Therapy Radio Podcast, and that's how you've got me. You can also email me directly, johnny at geektherapyradio.com, just J-O-H-N-N-Y at geektherapyradio.com, and of course, YouTube and social media, all that good stuff, Instagram. Uh, I do have a TikTok that I need to upload more to, but whatever social media, Facebook, X, just type in Geek Therapy Radio Podcast, and you are good to go. Okay, so for at least this first segment, and if you are a regular listener to the show, you know that it may very well go on beyond the first segment, but I think what I want to talk about in this first segment is kind of the cameras I've been using over the past year or so, kind of what I've settled into uh, for my videography work. For those of you who don't know, I am the YouTube manager for the Houston Museum of Natural Science. So I'm editing a lot of video, I'm shooting a lot of video. I have my backpack full of drones and video cameras with me at all time. Now actually, since I'm 40 years old and I have a bad back, I'm starting to take care of my back a little better and I have a photography videography roller bag. Uh, It's really, really cool. It's a newer, let me look at it real quick while I'm recording right here. Yeah, it's a newer. You can find them on Amazon all day long. Uh, What's the model number? I'll find the model number and I will put it in the description of this podcast. If you watch this on YouTube or if you're just listening to it in your favorite podcast player, just look at the description. I'll put, I will actually put links to everything that I'm about to mention in this show. Uh, But what I first want to talk about is kind of my camera setup and what I've been using day to day. If you're watching this YouTube video right now, yes, I'm uploading this episode to YouTube, you are seeing my Sony ZV-1. It is possibly the best, dollar for dollar at least, uh, compact point-and-shoot camera right now in the world. It's a one-inch sensor. I know that uh, a company or two do make full-frame compacts, not as small as the Sony ZV-1, uh, but then, and then you're talking about interchangeable lenses and all sorts of things. But the best point and shoot compact camera right now for anything, it's such a versatile camera, is the Sony ZV1. Uh, the ZV-E1 is a fixed, uh, fixed aperture. What is it? What's the word I'm looking for? Fixed focal length. Sorry about that. Where the Sony ZV-1 is a variable uh, focal length. So I'll look some stats up right here. I ordered on Amazon a while back. The focal length is between uh, 24 and 70 millimeters. So 24 and 70 millimeters, what that means is it's going to, 24 is is a good, decent wide angle. Actually, what you're looking at right now, if you're watching the YouTube channel, is the fullest wide angle, 24 uh, millimeter wide angle. And then you can also zoom it in all the way to 70 millimeters. Let's see if I can do that in real time on YouTube here. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I will tell you that 70 millimeters is, a, is, a, is an excellent kind of telephoto range, medium telephoto range, that pe- uh, photographers and videographers would say. Uh, that's great for portraits. That's great for 
uh, taking portraits of, of people, taking photographs of, of subjects and ma- and separating them out from the background behind them, getting that nice bokeh or bokeh, however you want to pronounce it, uh, behind the subject. So picture, you know, a pretty girl standing there in front of a forest and she's 100 yards in front of the forest. You use a 70 millimeter focal length to f- focus on the subject, focus on the girl's face, and then it blurs out all the trees kind of nicely behind her. Behind her. That's with 70 millimeters. Now that also depends on the 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 sensor size of the camera. So 70 millimeters, you know, like on your cell phone, for instance, that's a tiny, teeny, tiny little sensor. So you're not going to get as much background blur as you would with a bigger sensor. So the 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 bigger sensors are things like uh, uh, micro four thirds and actually like full frame. Full frame is a full 35 millimeter frame. So full frame is going to give you a nice background blur versus a smaller sensor. The sensor in the Sony ZV-1 is a one inch sensor. So it's not the biggest sensor in the world, but one inch is a really, really good uh, run and gun sensor size, especially for a point and shoot camera like this, like the Sony ZV-1. A one inch sensor is is excellent. That allows you to get some of that background blur and that bokeh behind you and bokeh, whatever you want to call it. Um, And it gathers a lot more light than a smaller sensor would. So like if you're trying to take pictures with your smartphone, yes, your smartphone's gonna use a whole lot of enhancing and, and AI and such to kind of take better low light photos at night or in dim situations. But there's, as we say in the automotive world, there's no replacement for displacement. So you don't need to use all the AI and enhancements. If you have a large full frame sensor or even a one inch sensor, that's just a bigger source of gathering light. You can think about it exactly like uh, astronomy with telescopes. So a four inch telescope versus an eight inch telescope versus a 12 inch in diameter 12 telescope versus a 36 inch in diameter mirror telescope. It's all about how much light you can gather. So that big three foot wide mirror on that reflector telescope is gonna gather a whole lot more light and let you see a lot deeper and dimmer into space. Same exact thing with camera sensors. The bigger the sensor, the more light you can capture. The smaller the sensor, the less light you can capture. The more noise you're gonna get in your images. The more AI kind of noise reduction that's gonna have to be used. Uh, But the Sony ZV-1 has a one inch sensor. Let's talk a little bit more about the Sony ZV-1 when we come back. You're listening to Geek Therapy Radio. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Sorry, got to clear my throat a little bit. Uh, I haven't eaten lunch yet as of recording, and I'm eating a nice little bag of Doritos, leftovers from our road trip to Virginia recently. So anyways, I was talking about the Sony ZV-1. That is a camera that I you have been actually using a lot. It is it is the ultimate. I guess this is a good you know segment for to me for me to explain to you why I love the ZV One. A lot of times, those of us who is most of us who have a little bit of gear lust, I would say we're kind of always perusing Amazon and Best Buy and looking around the internet and reading reviews and watching video reviews of different cameras and kind of what's out and what's the best, what's best for my situation. Da 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 da. I had been looking at the Sony ZV-1 for a while. My main shooter is the excellent Panasonic Lumix S5. It is the first generation. It is now the S5 Mark II or the S5 Mark II X, which is definitely on my list. I definitely, definitely, definitely want the uh, Lumix S5 uh, Mark II X to add to my... um, to add to my tool bag, so to speak, and move the first generation S5 to kind of B-cam roll because the second gen, the Mark II of the uh, Lumix S5 cameras have the way better phase detect autofocus and, and radar assisted and LiDAR and all that kind of stuff. So Sony, at looking right now at the Sony ZV-1, Sony's are known for their 
astronomically good autofocus. I haven't kind of fo- trying to track my face right now. So Sony's and Canon's, for that matter, have been known for their industry leading, you know, just far and away the best autofocus systems uh, in the world. So now Lu- the Lumix S5 Mark II has that. I want the Lumix S5 uh, Mark II X, which is much it, well, which is more catered toward videography. It has more tools and features that videographers will will use, so, such as like IP uh, streaming. Um, it has be- it's like better fans. But it can run longer. It can shoot at native 6K onto an SD card. Like there's there's just a bunch of different features about the the Lumix S5 Mark II X that make it a dream. A dream camera for somebody like me. Uh, but I just recently bought a drone. I recently bought the DJI Mavic 3 Pro uh, with the triple uh, sensors on there, with the triple lenses on there. Excellent drone. I still have my Mini 3 Pro. My Mini 3 Pro is all, my run and gun drone. Like, speaking of run and gun, we're talking about the Sony ZV1, which is what, if you're watching YouTube right now, that's the camera you're looking at right now as I'm recording. Um, my ultimate run and gun setup, like my EDC, my everyday carry for I'm going out in the field and I can't bring much. I can only bring a couple things with me at, literally as I'm running and gunning out in the field filming things. First, this Sony ZV-1, hands down. I also have, you know, GoPros and Insta360 cams and everything like that, but if I'm only carrying one th- main shooter, it's the Sony ZV-1. 100% as a run and gun, throw it in your pocket and go and know that you're going to capture excellent Sony quality footage on a one inch sensor. Have that infinitely usable uh, 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter uh, zoom range, telephoto range. Uh, it's just it, the, the codecs in it are excellent. The Sony, the color, Sony color uh, pa- uh, profiles, everything, and you can shoot to S log and S log two, and all sorts of different color gradable uh, color profiles, shooting 10 bit video. It's Excellent. The Sony ZV-1, and it goes right in your pocket. I can't even demonstrate, if you're just kind of watching this on YouTube or listening to the radio or listening to the podcast, uh, how small this is. Like It's small. It's way smaller than your cell phone. It probably doesn't weigh any less. It probably weighs a little more than your smartphone. But as far as like the surface area that it takes up on a desk, it's way smaller. And perhaps I can show that here on YouTube, obviously. But it's very small. It goes right in your pocket. It's not much bigger than your wallet, actually, as far as how wide it is. Uh, it's a little thicker than your wallet, obviously, unless you're a, a baller with that kind of scrilla. If your wallet is thicker than a point-and-shoot camera, you're probably pretty rich or very untidy with your wallet. You got that George Costanza wallet, you know, where he sits and like one butt cheek is lifted way up in the air, so he's always sitting at a tilt because he never cleans out the coupons and <laughs> preferred customer cards and stuff in his wallet. No. So, what I do, and this is full on dad mode, this is full on like videographer mode, is if I'm running and gunning, I can't even have a backpack with me. I have bought these uh, like Dickies cargo pants. I have cargo shorts and cargo uh, long khaki pants that have the extra pockets kind of down on the thigh area above the knee. So what I do is I have me in my phone and wallet in my front right pocket, my keys and whatever, my front left pocket, maybe even that Sony ZV-1. But in the pants, I will have probably the Sony ZV-1, a selfie stick kind of tripod all in one thing, sit in the same pocket, like retractable. Um, In the other pocket, and I might have a couple other things, extra batteries for the ZV-1, for instance. And then in the other pocket of the cargo pants, like in pocket number four, that's where I will literally keep my... uh, my Mavic, or sorry, my Mini 3 Pro, my my drone, my small drone, my sub 249 milligram drone, the uh, DJI Mini 3 Pro. I'll put that in the fourth pocket. Um, that the controller, the DJI RC, that fits in one of the cargo pockets too. So in my in my cargo pants at, at any given at given time for the super like lightweight run and gun, one pocket has the. Uh, the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone, the other pocket has a Sony ZV-1, and then maybe the uh, DJI RC for the drone with the Sony ZV-1 in that pocket. In the other pocket, I'll have a kind of retractable selfie stick with tripod on it so that I can mount the camera various places when I'm running and gunning. Uh, and I think I still have enough space left for over for like the little Sony batteries, which... 
That's the only knocker, maybe like a battery bank, a small, you know, uh, maybe 5,000 milliamp hour battery bank. Uh, that's my ultimate running gun. No backpack, just some cargo pants or cargo shorts, and that's how I'm running. ZV, Sony ZV-1, point and shoot, and the DJI Mini 3 Pro, and the very couple batteries for the Sony. So the Sony, that's my one of my only knocks against the Sony. There's two, it was one knock, and then there's a nitpick. The knock is that the battery life for the Sony ZV-1 using the Sony, what are these tiny batteries called? NP, they're not NP, what are they? Little tiny Sony batteries for the point and shoots. You're all familiar. Y'all remember 2007 and point and shoot cameras and the little batteries inside of them, the little flat gum stick looking batteries. That's basically what it is. And the battery life is abysmal. As I'm recording right now, you might be wondering, well, how are you just kind of dead rolling for YouTube here? How are you recording all in one like one big long 40 minute file for instance for instance that would kill a lot of cameras um i have it plugged in usb type c it takes power over usb type c uh and it's not type c excuse me it is still mini mini usb that I, micro usb that is kind of i guess another knock against it it is not type c the the data and power port on the sony zv1 is not type c uh yet Hopefully they'll change that soon. It is micro USB, but it can be powered forever over the micro USB. When you plug in the micro USB from a power supply, the camera just doesn't shut off. It'll just roll as long as it can, especially in, in 1080 mode. I don't think there's a limit to the length of recording in, in 1080, which is how I'm recording it right now. Uh, for the nerds, the settings I'm using right now, if you're watching YouTube, are shutter speed of 1 over 50, uh, f1.8, and the ISO is at 160. So, and autofocus is on. The nitpick is that autofocus. It's great. Autofocus is absolutely fantastic. And the fact that it does have a manual focus mode that you can tap on the screen where you want it to focus and it holds that focus. For instance, I will tap on YouTube right now on the wall kind of behind me. It should be focused on the wall behind me. Then I'll tap over on my face and it should kind of be uh, focused on my face. And I'm going to hit the center button to go back to autofocus mode. I wish, this is a nitpick, I wish it had a ring around the lens that I could adjust focus manually. I wish it was truly finger adjustable manual focus, but that's that's just kind of a nitpick. Uh, let's talk more about the ZV-1 and uh, in, in my thoughts on it and having used it for, you know, six or seven months now when we come back you're listening to geek therapy radio i'm your mental curator johnny hamburger don't go anywhere Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. You got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Uh, Johnny, J O H N N Y, at geektherapyradio.com is how you can email me directly. Uh, you can also hit the chat bubble at geektherapyradio.com. Sometimes I'm on there. Like sometimes I'm, I'm on the website working on something or kind of just checking it out. Uh, and you might be able to see me online there. I'm, I'm not sure kind of how that chat works, other than I know if you click that little red chat bubble, it'll just email me your message directly. That's how you contact me. When you go to geektherapyradio.com, the only thing you're going to see at this point is just the background, which is a cassette. So that's how you know it's Geek Therapy Radio, of course. Um, and then like the for, and then the most recent like five, three or four or five episodes, podcasts of Geek Therapy Radio. And then one of the bottom corners or wherever on the screen, you'll see a little chat bubble, which is how you send me messages directly. It does not sign you up for any sort of email list. It is not sending you, hey, a new episode of Geek Therapy Radio is out. Hey, go, you want to uh, contribute to Patreon? Hey, you want to buy a coffee mug from Geek Therapy? It's none of that. It's, it's, it's literally, it's as if you're just text messaging me. It's, if, it's as if you knew me personally and you're just saying, hey, Johnny, what's up? That's what happens. It goes to my uh, geektherapyradio.com email account. I just see it. As soon as it comes in, it'll, my, my email will have a push notification. So anyways, that's a way to get in, in touch with me uh, directly. Just go to geektherapyradio.com or email me, J-O-H-N-N-Y, Johnny, at geektherapyradio.com. So, 
As it turns out, I'm spending darn near most of the show at this point uh, talking about the Sony ZV-1, which is the ultimate and the best, to my knowledge, uh, point-and-shoot run-and-gun camera. It's got a one-inch sensor, that 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter uh, zoom range, so you have that good, decent 24 millimeter wide angle, wide angle, and then you can go all the way up to 70 millimeters, which is a good portrait range for taking, you know, more telephoto type pictures, compressing that background against the subject and maybe using some bokeh to blur it out. And since it's got a one inch sensor, you've got some flexibility. Did I even mention, this is what I wanted to use this segment about, that every time I use the Sony ZV-1, I'm just, I'm, I'm constantly blown away. Like, this is such a great camera. I, I, this it's maybe people are sleeping on I don't know it's I know it's very popular you'll see uh, like vloggers and things maybe using the Sony ZV-1 in their repertoire but as I use it the more I kind of understand and realize that this is like one of the best multi-tool cameras one of the most versatile cameras on the, on the, on the planet right now As a matter of fact if someone said to me should I use, as much as I love my Lumix S5 if I were to give up one camera and I only had to use one camera, just I had no choice but to either my full frame Lumix S5, which is a f- absolutely fantastic camera, both photography and videography, or give up my Sony ZV-1. If I only had to pick one, could only have one forever, uh, it's the Sony ZV-1. It's the most versatile and it's kind of like the Volkswagen GTI of of cameras and and those of you who kind of know what i'm talking about maybe your version maybe it's not volkswagen gti for you like if there's one car ever like the only car you could ever have for the rest of your life and you have to remember that this car has to do has to fit your whole life it has to it has to check every box as well as it can so some of people might say well, if i can only have only one car for my whole life i want a ferrari or i want a lamborghini or whatever you know like i, I wish i had a lamborghini countach as my only car I wish i had a ferrari f50 as my only car those are not going to tick every box. They're going to be the go fast and drink a lot of fuel box, but they're not going to be a good grocery hauler. They're not going to be able to haul some household items from Lowe's or Home Depot. They're not going to be able to cart kids around. They're not going to be able to be efficient on gas. They're not going to be able to hold a lot of boxes in the back. They're just not they're not pr- checking that practicality box. So like a GTI or a hatchback, like a Honda Civic hatchback or any sort of like a Chevy hatchback, whatever. The GTI for me is like the best car if you can only pick one car in the world ever. It's efficient. It's very fast and very fun to drive. It's a it's a hot hatch, so it checks the fun box more than I've had a a couple of GTI, like I freaking love GTIs. They're so fun to drive and so quick. You can make them quicker because most of them are turbos and whatever. Uh, you can tune them if you want to, but it also has four seats, sometimes even four, uh, four or five doors, plus the you know the hatchback in the back. The real volume, real interior volume for your random trips to Lowe's or Home Depot. Actual seating for one to two, maybe even three child seats for if your family grows, but it's still as your family grows and as you're doing the Home Depot runs, it's still plenty fast, 200 something on horsepower, or you can easily chip it up to like 300 something horsepower for like a thousand bucks. It's such a versatile car and it checks every box like very well. Uh, That's what the Sony ZV-1 is as a camera to me. It is not the image is not as good as a as the full frame image on my Lumix S5, but it is still an exceptional image, still very usable image, and you can choose it from a variety of frame rates, everything from like, I think you can go 960 frames per second at standard resolution, and you can even go 1080p at 120 frames a second, 4K 60 frames a second, but you can also choose those more useful cinematic frame rates. For instance, right now, I'm just running at uh, 1080p, and 24 frames a second, 50 uh, megabits per second as a for the on the codec. Uh, so it's very versatile. You can choose, you know, 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and by 24 and 30, what I really mean is, is it? I need to check. Is it 23 drop frame or 24 drop frame and 30 drop frame is like 29.997 or 23.94? For all intents and purposes. It's 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, all the way up to 960 frames a second if you're going to shoot a 960 slow-mo clip in standard resolution. So, um, 
you have lots of versatile options to use uh, for video frame rates, even uh, bit rates. You can even choose uh, color profiles. You can shoot it in a log. I'm not shooting in a log profile right now, but you can shoot it in Sony log so that you can go back and color grade to your heart's content. It's just a magnificent, magnificent camera for video work, even though it's technically not a full frame and therefore won't have that full frame look in a lot of situations. Um, but it is so well-rounded. Obviously, it takes great still photos as well. But it all. But here's what matters to the videographers and people who work with a lot of video, a lot in vloggers and different things like that. It's it's the port. It's it's the camera version of port selection. I mentioned that it's a it's a knock that it's a micro USB port for its data and its power. But you can work around that. There are still micro USB cables around. I just wish it was Type C, so you didn't have so you could just use one cable for everything basically. Um, but you also have a microphone input, microphone or line input jack, and you have an HDMI out with a clean feed. You can use this as a webcam. You can use this for Twitch streaming, YouTube streaming, like live streaming your gameplay, whatever. Uh, when you plug into the HDMI port, you can have it set to just a clean HDMI output. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it's 10 bit. Don't quote me on that. Uh, it's very usable. I've used it. I've I've uh, used my clean HDMI output from the Sony ZV-1 right into OBS before. Uh, so you have that HDMI output, which I'm sure if you go into a, like a, a an Atmos Ninja or something like that, you can record at a, a lot higher, you know, quality uh, out of that HDMI port. You could probably go raw HDMI output out of it. Um, don't quote me. I need to check that. I'll, I'll verify that. Um, so it's got those three ports. You have the micro USB, which yeah, whatever. Um, but you have the HDMI and you also have the line input and microphone input, which is super important. You might be listening to this right now and thinking, wow, why are those why are those inputs and outputs HDMI and, and microphone line in and out so 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 important? You know, my camera, to, my phone, my smartphone doesn't have a line input, you know, jack on it or an HDMI out. And it takes, you know, good enough. When you're working with kind of more higher end video kind of productions and you want way more control over your edit and what you're doing and maybe you don't want to use the built-in microphone to the the camera or to your smartphone you need that microphone input to plug in whatever microphone or lavaliers you want or sound mixer you want dji mics are freaking that is part of my edc i mean dji mics I, I sound like a shill for DJI, but they're, they're such game changers. If you do video work, if you're running and gunning and doing video work, DJI mics are absolutely indispensable now. And they're like 300 bucks, the first generation at least, but I don't know what by the time you're watching this or listening to this, they might have the second gen DJI mics that will undoubtedly have 32-bit float recording. Um, but as of now, I've got the first gen. They're like, they're like 300 bucks, 350 bucks. You would, you could easily spend two. If even if DJI had the DJI mics at two thousand dollars, like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, there w still would be no buyer's remorse. You'd buy them for fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars and be like, these are so useful. These are so indispensable now to my to my kit that I can't. That even at that price, it wouldn't be a remorse. But it's three hundred bucks or three hundred fifty bucks. Sometimes it goes under three hundred dollars for the first gen DJI mics, and they're indispensable. Uh, let me finish up talking about the Sony ZV-1 when we come back. You are listening to Geek Therapy Radio. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. The microphone in the ZV-1 is actually not bad for a kind of ambient, multi-directional microphone, but nothing's going to beat a good condenser or a lav right on the source. Anyways, more Geek Therapy Radio coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Geek Therapy Radio. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. For some reason, I've spent this entire episode talking about the Sony ZV-1 point-and-shoot camera that, as a quick recap, I find to be indispensable for my everyday carry. It is such a versatile camera in almost any situation that it's kind of the hat, the hatchback of cameras, whereas hatchback cars are kind of the most check-every-box of 
uh, fun to drive, economical, can fit a lot of you know Lowe's boxes in their Home Depot boxes, can also fit a bunch of kids, also be good on gas, also be fun to drive, be everything, just be everything for everybody at any kind of given moment in their life. Uh, that's kind of what the Sony ZV-1 uh, camera is. It's a point and shoot. One in sensor, 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter uh, zoom range. You've got a good wide angle, the 24 millimeter wide angle, and then that kind of medium telephoto portrait 70 millimeter uh, mode. And since you have that one in sensor, you can play with your settings. You can get some depth of field going behind you, some bokeh, some separation of the subject in the background going because of that nice big one in sensor. Also means you're going to have good low light uh, performance with an actual one inch sensor, no no replacement for displacement kind of thing. Um, and it's just a wonderful all around camera. And, the, and most importantly, the image looks great. The image coming out of it, even if you don't use a log profile to later, you know, color grade yourself and you're just kind of using Sony's built in color profiles for, you know, regular Rec 709. It looks absolutely fantastic. I'm recording. I know YouTube is going to smash this and do whatever it does to the video once it's uploaded, but I am recording my camera right now, my Sony ZV-1 at uh, 24 frames a second and a bit rate of 50 megabits per second, and it looks great. It's 1080p. This is not a 4K video. I could easily record you know, 4K 24 frames a second with this camera. I think it's 150 megabits per second, 4K on this camera. Um, but you just have all those options and the image looks great. Even at 1080, it's gonna look nice and sharp and crisp and clear and the skin tone should look pretty decent and you know, color banding's gonna be one thing because I'm gonna upload it to YouTube and it's gonna get converted down to 8-bit no matter what I'm recording at and whatever, but it still should look good. You know, you're watching YouTube right now if you're watching this on YouTube and you're, you're seeing things and they're sharp, you see my microphone, see my face, think, you know, color should be pretty natural. So. It's such a versatile camera, the Sony ZV-1, and it's a point and shoot. It's the size of a point and shoot. It is probably smaller than your wallet. It is definitely smaller as far as uh, surface area than your smartphone, but it has all these features, HDMI output, microphone and line input, uh, micro USB, unfortunately, for power and data. You've got that quarter inch thread on the bottom, so it mounts to different things. The built-in camera sounds decent for what it is. Uh, so, and you can pair it with, here's what I use it a lot for is I usually pair this camera up, uh, with, uh, my audio solution of choice is the, the DJI mics. Uh, let me see if I can reach them in my bag here and show them on YouTube. So I'm back here. I'm holding up on YouTube. You can see the, the case for my uh, DJI mics. I don't know if the camera is going to focus in on that. I don't have it in product mode. You can put this camera in product mode the Sony ZV-1 in product mode, which means when you hold something up, you know, towards the lens, it knows, hey, this person's holding something up. Let's focus on what they're holding up. I do not have that. I don't, I'm not using that mode right now. So I don't know if that's going to work on the YouTube. We'll see. We'll see if it's smart enough to know that, oh, even though we're not in product mode, he's holding something up. We'll see. But these are the DJI mics. These are what I use to uh, pump audio into my Sony ZV-1 and my Lumix S5 for that matter. Uh, I use this, this is the receiver, this is what goes, hopefully maybe it'll focus on it, maybe not. This is what goes, it did focus on it, awesome. And you can see the good bokeh in the background. You can see that one in sensor in full effect blurring out the background behind my uh, subject here. But this is the uh, receiver for the DJI mics and this is what slides into the, the shoe of the camera and then you go out with a little one eighth you know uh, trs cable into the line input of the camera so this thing sits on top of my sony zv1 and then i have two of these transmitters that this sounds like a like a like an ad for dji even though it's not you can see on the youtube video that i have put a black piece of electrical tape over the dji logo because i don't want that shiny thing on camera and being a giant ad for dji when i record things for the museum so i've i've, I've blacked out the logo on my on my transmitters but i want to show you what's cool about these transmitters so you all you have this you have the clip as usual, look how good this camera looks. The Sony ZV-1, this is amazing. There's my face again, it detected it, and I'll go back to what's in front of me and it's gonna be, it's gonna do a pretty good job of focusing, I say that now, uh, on what I'm holding in front of the camera. So anyways, the clip on the DJI mic, you got this clip, but you also have this game changer. It's a very strong neodymium magnet. 
that clips on to the clip itself. So now that gives you versatility to clip it and hide it on in more areas of of the body, on the shirt, on the lapel, whatever. You can have this mic kind of like the bulk of it inside the lapel hidden and then only have this little black square on the lapel. Barely, you could barely notice anything's there. But the magnet makes it super versatile to put this mic anywhere. Uh, the omnidirectional microphone on the uh, uh, the DJI mic lapel here sounds exceptional. Uh, you see the Sony kind of struggling to focus. Again, this is not in product mode, uh, but the built-in microphone sounds great. Um, you also have another input, so you can plug in your own lapels, your own microphones to the transmitter. Guitarists, you plug your musicians, you plug your musician, your music output, your audio output from your keyboard, from your electric guitar, from from your pedals, whatever, into this, and you can transmit it over to your amp, over to the soundboard, whatever. It's amazing. You can also, since this is a clip and there's that magnet clip, you can attach it inside the sound hole of your acoustic guitar. You can clip it to the sound hole of your acoustic guitar, clip the other uh, mic up on your your collar, and you're a one man band. You're a one girl band, whatever you want to, whatever. Uh, it's They're so versatile in that way. So you also, we're not done yet. It does have type C for data on the side and there's eight gigabytes of internal memory on these Gen 1 DJI mics. Uh, so it can record for like 14 or 17 hours straight into the, I think that's wave actually, into wave format, into the microphone itself. Uh, but you also have the type C to offload it. And you can, you got the record buttons on the side and the power buttons on the side of the microphone here. So you can be dead roll, dead rolling on recording for, with the microphone. So in between takes, you're not losing anything. Uh, it's like, it's like a really good backup. Uh, so yeah, these DJI mics, they are always living with my Sony ZV-1, which if you're watching YouTube, you're seeing here. I, I can't recommend them enough. And probably the best part about the DJI Mic 2s that are about to come out as of recording. They're probably going to come out soon. Um, the best part about the DJI Mic 2s or the second generation DJI Mic mics, it's kind of like Apple M1, M2, M3. The best part of M2 and M3 is that M1 is so cheap now. Uh, that's the same situation for the DJI mics. When the second generation comes out, the best thing about that is that the first generation are going to get all the cheaper because they are absolutely fantastic and like i said in the for the previous segment it's one of those products that costs like 300 bucks or something like that i think you get on sale a little cheaper but even if you spent 1500 on it on it two thousand dollars on it you would not there would be no buyer's remorse it is that useful in a videographer's kit uh, or vloggers kit whatever whatever video work we do is so it's a, dji mics are such an indispensable game changer that they're worth so much more and even at 300 bucks they are it's like a steal. I promise anybody who gets any videographer, anybody who does video work gets DJI mics. They'll, they'll feel the exact same way. Cause I've never met somebody who's like, Oh, these, these aren't good. These aren't working out for me. What? <laughs> That's okay. I don't even know what, what, what your situation's going on. Maybe your Hollywood film set. I have no idea. They EQ really nice. Well, also they EQ great that you can make them sound even better. If you know what you're doing with EQ and compression. But anyways, I've been talking mostly about the Sony ZV-1 point-and-shoot, the best all-around camera in the world right now, in my opinion, the hatchback of, of video and photography cameras, and the DJI Mic 2 to a lesser extent, the D DJI Mics to a lesser extent. But that's what I just what I wanted to geek out about today. If you're listening to Geek Therapy Radio, thank you so much for listening. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of giving love. You are worthy of receiving love. And you are worthy of your own self-respect. Dive into your geek thing, enjoy your geek thing, share your geek thing, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.